wouldn't it be wouldn't it be wise for Christians wouldn't it be wise to uphold Christianity <laughs> I would think wouldn't it be wise to uphold the things that Jesus Christ taught good morning Simon Mathuda and Gabriel one young Christ said love your enemies do good to them that persecute you Christ said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. Christ taught that he loved us with an everlasting love. That he knew us before we were even born. Christ taught that he was the Son of God, the eternal Son of God. Good morning, Kip Curry and Hyder David Vider Vidinger Broke. <laughs> Christ taught that he was the God. And he foretold that he was going to lay his life down for his sheep. My sheep know my voice and they follow me and no man can pluck them out of my hand. Christ taught that he was coming back again. We look for the imminent return of Jesus Christ. So we not only believe in the death of Christ for his people, the burial of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, the imminent return of Christ. We, we have a hope, steadfast and sure, an anchor that Jesus Christ is who he said he was. Good morning, Prafula Kumar and Rose Lynn. Good morning this morning. He is our hope. So when we say I'm a Christian, that includes embracing and adhering to the things that Christ taught. I've talked to many people that say they're Christians and they go to a Catholic church. The Bible teaches that it is not of works. Salvation is not of works. The Roman Catholic Church is full of works. Salvation, penance, purgatory, saying the rosary, going to mass. All of these things that are not Christian are the furthest thing from Christianity. I live here in the United States and over 90% of all churches uphold to the free will of man. The free will of man is not taught in the Bible. The only one that has free will is, is Jesus Christ. He says, I came to do the will of my father. He says, it is not of him that will, but God that showeth mercy. In the seventh chapter of Matthew, it says in the 21st verse, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Now, I, I'm going to tell you all, when I'm broadcasting, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't call me. Okay. It's very rude if you know I'm broadcasting to, to start calling because it interrupts my broadcast. So, um, you know, uh, if if you uh, if you want to email me, um, 
especially when there's language barriers. I love you guys. Um, Kishi, uh, you guys, we will get with you. We will continue the relationship. But there's no, no use us calling and doing video calls when we, we can't communicate because we don't understand each other's language and we don't have interpreters. And so uh, please don't call me during the broadcast. I, okay, now the, um, he says, I will, con he says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And thy name have cast out devils. And thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Well, we need to embrace the doctrines of Jesus Christ. We need to embrace the doctrines of Jesus Christ. If you're if you're embracing any other doctrine, okay, other than what Christ taught, and you say you're a follower of Christ, then you know <laughs> that that would be like uh, if I were to say uh, I was a Muslim. And I never, ever read the Quran. And I never uh, embraced Allah. Okay? How can I be a Muslim if I don't embrace the Quran or uh, what was taught by Islam? So anyway, if you're a Christian, you're going you're gonna to stand up for and embrace the things that Christ taught. It says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Okay? Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes, or thorns, or figs, or thistles? Ever, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt earth, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither that a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Matthew 7 verses 15 through 18. Why did Christ and the Apostle Paul and Peter and John spend so much time on doctrine? You know, I had a friend of mine, I guess he was a friend, he was a uh, short-term friend because um, he called me one day and he said, why do you spend so much time on doctrine? I'm not interested in doctrine, you know. Well, the New Testament says there will come a time when they will not endure sound doctrine but they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. What does that mean? In other words, tell me what I want to hear. Okay. Don't, don't, just give me smooth things. Okay. Uh, give me something that, that tickles my ears, so to speak. Don't give me the hard truth of God's word. I don't want to hear it. Well, why do you think that Jesus Christ was so maligned? Why did they cast him out of the synagogue? Because he came against the traditions of men, didn't he? You know, the Pharisees, the scribes, the, the Sadducees taught uh, the, the traditions of their fathers. You know, it was more important that they washed their hands before they ate. And they treated people like they wanted to be treated. It says that they broadened their phylacteries. <laughs> they liked to be seen in the marketplace. Um, they had these synagogues, these edifices. You know, 
Today we see that in the United States. These huge brick and mortar million dollar buildings. And they're what I call entertainment centers. It's really all it is, is entertainment centers. And organized religion knows how to entertain the masses. They know how to entertain them. But Jesus Christ was not an entertainer. Jesus Christ was the truth teller. He told the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is our advocate. Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice for all of his people's sins. And Jesus Christ laid his life down freely to guarantee eternal salvation for all for whom he died for. Jesus Christ has completed the work that his father sent him to do. And he's coming back again for all of his children. So let us remember that if we say we're a Christian, let's embrace the doctrines that the Bible taught. That we were born and conceived in sin. That we were lost without a savior. That Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, by the Virgin Mary. And that he was born into a manger. And he was the incarnation of God Almighty, the eternal Son of God. And that he walked 32 years on this earth. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. And he is the only hope of eternal salvation through his perfect sacrifice on the cross for his people. And that he died, he was buried, and he rose again from the dead. And he did it all. And we, if we are in Christ, we were chosen in him from the foundation of the world to be conformed to the image of his son. And he tells us through the apostle Paul, to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. And he exhorts us to walk in ways that are pleasing to him. Not because it has anything to do with our eternal salvation, but we're told not to be weary in well-doing. And Paul asks the question, shall we sin so that grace will abound? God forbid. So this morning, be encouraged. Embrace, embrace the doctrines of the Bible. Embrace the doctrines that Jesus taught, and the apostles taught, especially if we're going to call ourselves Christians. Don't embrace humanistic psychology, and don't embrace uh, universal atonement. Don't embrace the free will of man. Embrace the completed work of Jesus Christ. May the good Lord be with you today. God bless.